Hello, my name is Skyler and I'm with the Allfill Service Team. Today we're going to go through the setup of your model B350E. We're going to go through mechanical setup of auger tooling for non-free flow and free flow tooling. And we're also going to go through how to set up your recipe so that you get consistent fills. The first thing we want to do is verify that the funnel safety prox is installed on the machine and that we have metal, in this case, the alignment tool, installed to illuminate the funnel safety prox. To install the alignment tool, you simply insert and lock down the three thumb screws. Now with the funnel safety prox illuminated, I'm able to twist and pull the e stop out and hit reset. You'll hear the rear fill motor kick on uh, and you'll see that the screen says ready to start. With the machine illuminated, we're now able to actually test the alignment. So on one side of the alignment tool, there's a slightly milled down section. That's the section that's gonna go into the machine. We're gonna install it. And now this one is perfectly aligned. I will address aligning the tooling later on in the video. Now that we verified that the machine is powered up and uh, comes out of e-stop, I'm going to go through the mechanical disassembly of the machine. So that way we can install an agitator and later the tooling. So to push in the e-stop, you just hit the red button. I'm going to then remove the alignment puck and the funnel safety procs. So this simply unscrews. There is an alignment pin for reinstallation. From here, I'm gonna then do the drum style clamp and set that on the back of the, the filler. And then there's a large uh, thumb screw on the back of the uh, column here, and it is displayed on the red sticker here. So now I can just pull back the hopper and it's fairly lightweight, uh, but you do wanna make sure you're on solid ground when you remove it. Here is the shaft, the auger shaft, and we need an agitation blade that's gonna to attach to the spindle assembly. With the hopper removed from the machine, you can see the auger shaft slot that controls the auger height. That's where we do our auger height adjustment through the inspection window on the side of the machine here. So also when we are performing an alignment with the hopper installed is the only way to do the alignment and you're feeling for this spring-loaded pressure and that you're still able to turn the alignment rod. Okay, so with that, I'm going to install our uh, agitation blade. This uses a 3 8 by 16 by one inch uh, bolt and is tightened with a 9 16 wrench. Also, the auger shaft uses a half inch wrench and a uh, 5 16 18 3 quarter inch uh, bolt. Okay, so now we can go ahead and reinstall our hopper. So you wanna make sure that the thumb screw is all the way back and that the washer is pushed up against it. Bring the hopper up into place, making sure the gasket is in around the entire side of the, the hopper cover. Okay. and then give it a slight push up and back and it goes right into place. I haven't tightened the nut and it's holding itself. So I'm just gonna snug that up. You do not need to kill that. You just need to tighten it. And then we're gonna do the hopper clamp. Okay, so now we're gonna go through setting up auger tooling. This is a set of non-free flow tooling. So the first thing I'm gonna do is install my funnel safety procs. There is an alignment pin, so do not force it on. You wanna wait until you see it get accepted a little bit and then screw the, the wire onto it. All right, now that that's secure, I'm gonna install my uh, non-free flow auger first. You just kind of feel around until you feel the auger shaft and then up and over to lock into that J hook. And then I can install the auger funnel. One thing we haven't done yet is, in, is check the auger height. So in this case, my auger is set too high 
and I need to remove the inspection window and lower the auger down until it is about a fingernail's length away from the lip of the funnel. So now we're going to remove the inspection window by loosening the thumb screws and pulling up and out. I'm just gonna set this on top of the hopper cover so I can take my half inch wrench and loosen up the auger shaft so that I can set the auger height. Uh, to set the auger height, I'm just going to use either an auger gap gauge or I can tell by just uh, doing it by about a fingernail's gap and I'll shore up the bolt now. Okay, so now we can look at the auger height for non-free flow tooling. Okay, now with the auger height set, if you're still experiencing a drip, which is when the auger stops and product continues to drip out, we have drip washers. This is going to use a left-hand screw and a washer that has a beveled edge. The beveled edge gets installed upwards towards the auger, and since it's a left-hand screw, it is lefty-tighty. I'm gonna tighten up the drip washer, and now the drip washer is installed. Okay, so we have the non-free flow tooling installed. I'm going to remove that and install free flow tooling to show how to set that up. So just loosen the three thumb screws, let the uh, funnel drop out, and then I'm gonna lift up on the non-free flow auger and pull out after I twisted it uh, counterclockwise. Now with the free flow set of tooling, depending on the auger size, I can install the funnel first. So with this one, I will install the auger first. I always start with this side so it kind of pushes it towards the uh, funnel safety procs, tightening up uh, all three thumb screws. And now I can install the uh, free flow set of tooling up and over. Now the free flow auger is installed. So with the free flow auger set, you want the last flight, the flat flight of the auger to be flush or slightly proud of the uh, funnel. And now I'm gonna install this, uh, the spinner plate. Again, left hand thread here. And this requires a double nut. So I have the one nut there. I'm just gonna snug it, but not tighten it too hard. And then I'm going to take the second nut install that and then lock the two together. All right, now your free flow auger is installed. Okay, so with the auger height set and the spinner plate installed, I'm going to remove the auger again and install the collector funnel ring, clamp ring, and that is tightened with a 316 Allen wrench about halfway up the funnel and the reason we want it halfway up the funnel is so that we have enough room for the auger to drain out of the collector and we don't cause an auger jam. Here is the collector funnel so I'm just going to insert that into the machine groove and tighten up the thumb screws. And now our B350E is set for running product. One more thing I wanna show you is auger height is actually product dependent. So in this case, I have the, the end of the auger flight completely flush with the funnel and I get a nice even cone shape of product coming off of, off of the spinner plate. One thing you don't want is product spilling over the edge. That's gonna create inaccuracies in filling and that is telling me that the, the auger is too low. If you have too large of a flat spot or the product's not able to make it to the edge just sitting idle, then your auger is too high. So now that the tooling's completely set up, we can go ahead and twist and pull out an e-stop again and our machine is ready to use. We just have to set up our recipe. Okay, from the main menu, uh, you can see that we're out of e-stop and we're in uh, ready to start. So from here, we can hit the run switch or stop switch. We can go to our recipe to set up the recipe. In this case, I just have it, product name is test. Uh, recipe number one, you have up to 10 recipes. 
Anything over that will not let you enter it. Uh, I have my auger revs I can set here. Uh, for now, I'll just leave it at five. Agitation I can control from here too, setting it to continuous or off. Here I want to do with fill. If I go back and I go to agitator, I can then also select an off delay, uh, which allows the agitator to continue to move after the auger has already stopped. Again, continuous or off. I have my level control where I can turn my level control on, which also will send a signal to a product request. And I can have my product in fee turned on. I also have the ability of doing low level agitation, which when we detect a low level, the agitation uh, blade will go around pulling product away from the infeed chute and leveling off the product. Uh, cutoff, if you have a cutoff, then we can do either by time, which uses the open and close time, or by limit switch. We're not using a cutoff here. Uh, again, I have my auger revolutions I can set, and then I can also set a delay after fill. If I set it to three seconds, uh, if I step on the foot switch within that three seconds, it will not initiate a fill. In case your auger fillers encoder fails, you also have the ability of doing it by time, which then you can control your auger by time. Uh, by revolution is by far the best way to get accuracy because we can fine tune the auger revolutions to whatever we need to, to get the perfect amount of product. Uh, we also have our test menu where we can do filling accessories. These are for reference only, so the operator knows what kind of auger they have, what kind of uh, funnel they have, if they have a collector funnel or a spinner plate, and if they have a high-speed D-blade. We also have our test menu where we're able to test our auger doing an empty hopper mode. If I was to hit empty hopper, it will not turn off until I re-hit it. Jog auger will jog the auger for the amount of revolutions I have set here in the blue box. The white box is the last revolutions the machine has performed. And then we also can test our agitator. Doing so will also allow us to check our rotation of our auger and our agitator. Our agitator should go clockwise and our auger should go counterclockwise. We can also test our outputs to make sure those uh, pieces of equipment are functioning properly. In this case, the product request to control a in-feed system, a cutoff to control your cutoff, and an end of fill if you're hooked up to another piece of equipment. And we can also test our inputs. So I can test to make sure my foot switch works, if my cutoff worked, and if my low level sensor worked. And that's going through the entire B350 control screen. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to calculate out your auger revolutions. We're gonna start out with an offline scale and a calculator, and we're going to set our initial auger revs to a low number. I'm gonna set it to five so I don't overfill the container. Now we hit start, press tear on the scale to tear out the container, and I'm gonna do my first fill. At five revolutions, we got 219 grams. So I'm going to do my initial auger revs, which is five, divided by 219.1 grams, and then multiply our target weight. In this case, the target weight is 300 grams. That gave me uh, what our calculated auger revs should be is around 6.8. So I'm going to set my calculated auger revs to 6.8, empty my container, and do another fill. This is going to get us in the ballpark, so then we can uh, do another calculation to get on target. So I'm going to initiate another fill. Now we're at 296.5 grams, so I'm going to hit clear. So that was 6.8 revolutions divided by 296.5. 
and multiply again by 300. So now we should be at 6.9 revs, which should give us our target weight. It's fairly close, so that's how you calculate your auger revolutions. So that concludes our how to set up a model B350E auger filler. If you have any more questions or concerns or need more information, feel free to call us at 610-524-7350. Thank you.